and welcome back to That's So Nova. My name is Nova. If this is your first time here to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. And I hope you guys like the, the content I'm bringing you today. Today we're going to be making a Sonar's uh, Tall Wallet. I personally really love her wallets. I I hope I say this right. I carry the Trisket. Is it Tris Trisket? Her, she has an uh, exclusive pattern that has an exclusive video and it's a beautiful wallet and it has like a center divider. It's, it's one of, it's absolutely gorgeous. And that's the wallet I've been carrying for almost, I want to say a year and a half now. Um, but today we're making another wallet that was under my radar until a couple weeks ago, the tall wallet. And I know you've probably seen it. I've made, um, a Hello Kitty one and I, you haven't seen this one. I haven't posted it. I made a Lords of the Ring one. The cool thing about this, it doesn't, this pattern, it can literally use scraps of vinyl, cork, or leather, and it doesn't require a whole lot, but it's a beautiful finish, a nice weight to it, and you can do a lot of cool nerdy things. So for me today, I'm going to be showing you how to um, install an outside magnet, because in the pattern, it's the magnet is nestled in between uh, the two layers of cork. I'm going to actually show you how I do it for the outside just to give it a different touch, as well as I'm going to show you how to, um, I'm going to show you how to line your, your pocket. So that way you have that, you don't need this. Let me reiterate this. You don't need it. The wall, the pat, the wallet pattern sticks to just sewing it around and you do this really cool thing where you stitch outside of the pocket. Um, so that way the coins don't slide. I just decided to do with a, um, a little bit of lining because normally when people buy wallets for me, they're going for the geeky fabric that I make. So I wanted to bring something like, like a little classiness of this wallet and with a little bit of geekiness that was inside me. <laughs> so I got the Hello Kitty one, um, for the Tolkien one. I have this really cool zipper pull that says not, not all who wonders are lost. And I use the Lord of the Ring fabric. And I thought, cool. So we're going to be making these two today. And I'm also going to show you how I edge paint. Now, before I, we go further in this, I am not the know-all be-all of edge painting. Um, it does take a long time. It does take patience. And sometimes even when you've done it a million times, you can get it wrong that just that one time. So it's a patient process. We're going to put together the wallet. I'm going to explain to you where I um, modified or added something that isn't part of the pattern. And we're going to enjoy this process. And then at the end, when we're all, when it's all construction, I'm going to show you how I cut it down and we're going to apply our first base coat of, um, of our, uh, base coat. It's dense. And I got this, I think from Inaline. as you can see, my bottle is really worn because I use a lot of edge painting for a lot of stuff. This is a uh, Gar, I hope a Gardini. um, and it's the base coat dents and I love this. And I'm gonna show you the tools that I use. And then today, because I'm doing till with accents of silver, I'm going to be using um, the silver edge paint that I just received from Mojo Soaps. So I'm going to use that. We're going to need everything that's part of the wallet. Um, I'm using Snap A. And if you can't see, I'm using actually at uh, so magical view watched by a haul. I bought this pattern, um, this pattern uh, for. I can't talk today. Or till the uh, the acrylic templates because I knew immediately once I made the first one that this will be perfect for the craft shows I have um, that are locally people wanting you know um, all natural fabric like cork and I was like I'm buying this. It makes my life easier. Um, so we're gonna. I'm using tall um, tall snap A. You're going to need your card slot B panel with the window cut out. You're going to need your, your tall wallet win vinyl window with the thumb hole kind of cut out. I didn't do that perfect. I'm going to clean it up with the lighter in a second. You're going to need your tall ID backing. I'm using the fabric from, um, I think it's Riley Paper Com Riley Paper Company, if I'm not mistaken, and it is the um, March Girls. It's 
I have a thing with little women and I think everyone does. So I thought with this, this particular um, color cork, I'm going to use, use uh, some little women fabric and we have Joe centered. This is the reason why I also like templates is that you can like fussy cut a little easier. You can see exactly where your placement is. So I know Joe's going to be up front and center. If you like women, little women, who's your favorite character or who's the character? Better yet, who's the character you relate to? It may not be necessarily a favorite character, but there's like certain things that you like. Like I know everybody wants to be a Joe, but there are Amy's, there are Meg's. Like who is your favorite character? I'm curious. Um, then we're gonna need card slot A. And you can see I still have uh, some Tandy leather on there. And all her pattern pieces have the markings of where you're going to do your card slots um, slit. So that should be all prepared before you start. And then we have two um, tall wallets uh, body. You need the body and the lining. They have all the markings on here. Transfer them onto your cork on the front and in the back so that way you can see them. And don't drop your templates like I just did. And now I have to pick it up. <laughs> okay. Um, so you're going to need your zipper. You're going to need, uh, it's, I believe if I'm not mistaken, it says 82 inch wide ribbon or very thin material. I have very thin material that I'm using. And then the modification to add the lining. If you want to add it, you do not have to. I basically cut this uh, three inches by seven. We're going to cut it down tremendously, but I just, it's just always easier for me when I'm trying to place a zipper on if I have a more room than I know wiggle room to cut around or whatever. So, and they're not interfaced whatsoever because I'm trying to keep no bulk into the, um, into one part of the bag and not. You really can't feel the difference um, with uh, when the pockets in there, but somebody might. So these are three and a half by seven, I mean, three inches by seven on an interface and kind of wrinkly because they've been in my little um, project box for a while. <laughs> you definitely are gonna need to have um, your accordion fold template paper ready. And then we're gonna get started. Okay, so we're going to start on page one. We're going to install, I mean, I'm sorry, on page three, we're going to install the zipper. So let me get this, the, the inset zipper. So because we're not, if you're reduced doing it with the zipper, you would just place it on top and stitch all the way around the box. Because I wanna add the lining, I'm going to grab one lining piece and I'll grab a few clips. One lining piece, have the zipper how you wanna face it, whether you want it left or right, there's no right or wrong answer. And then I'm going to come over to my machine and I'm using 40 weight thread and uh, I'm going to use a stitch length of 3.5 and I'm going to back stitch them. It would help if I move the ruler out of the timing belt. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do 3.5. I'm doing one eighth of an inch. And I'm just, you don't have to back stitch at the beginning of in because realistically this is going to get cut. I'm going to have a couple different camera views. Um, there's been requests for different views. I'm trying to see what will help and everybody best. Um, especially when I'm edge petting, when I come back, cause at the end of this video, you're going to see me put the dense coat on and basically I'm going to shut off the camera and walk away and let it dry. I let my edge paint dry for 30 minutes, sometimes a longer in the winter time in the winter time. No, I'm sorry. It's longer in the summertime because there's humidity in the winter time when it's colder, it seems to dry faster because there's less humidity in the air. All right. So we just sewed on one eighth of an inch onto the other side. Make sure you trim your threads. And then I'm going to take some double sided tape. And I believe this is three sixteenth of an inch tape. I cannot find my one fourth of an inch and I need to order some more from Wawak. Like 
tomorrow. And I'm not really concerned because they're in Philadelphia. I can order for them right now and it'll be at my door tomorrow. It's like Amazon for me. Because <laughs> Amazon sure does not deliver things on time for me. All right. And it's I know it's harder because it's the holidays. So we're going to remove the double-sided tape. And I'm going to show you two ways you can sew this zip this lining zipper on. I'm going to explain one way and do it the other and show you one way. Because it doesn't have to be difficult, especially if you're like line making. If you're making these for like, I have a craft show this Sunday. If you're making it for like a craft show and you're trying to make a whole bunch of them and you want a line, I first I would say, do you really want a line? Because, you know, um, the craft show is on Sunday. And if you're like me, you're procrastinating, then <laughs> you might want to do how it is in the path how it is in the pattern so that way you don't have to uh worry about lines and extra stitch you can do this exactly like how um nicole has in the pattern you can pull the, these little the lining fabric taut you can put a couple clips on the side just to make sure it's nice and taut and then you can literally just sew around the box and you're good um or you can do flipping Flipping all the lining pieces outside of the, away from the zipper and do the bottom line, cut the threads, and then go up and across like we do with a normal pocket. So I'm going to do it that way. I, I am back stitching. I'm using 40 weight thread on the top and the bo bottom, bottom, <laughs> it's solid thread from, um, from, from Waywack as well. I didn't have exactly a tail, but. I feel like this color just is going to merge in and it won't be a problem. And I'm back stitching. You could pull your threads to the back if you wish, but I know, I know I use my coin pocket a lot and it has a lot of stress points. So that extra back stitch gives it, um, some extra security. If you hear little feet running around, we got hit with again with strep. My middle child hope is home and that's who you will be hearing. <laughs> Um, so we're going to trim the threads and we're going to sew up and back down. And I like to actually backstitch over with a T-thar. I know that a lot of people don't like doing that, but again, it's a high stress point. And depending if you have a person like me that is really rough on bags, you just want to make sure that this bag last with them and that they're not complaining to you like hey the zipper came out or da 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 <laughs> okay and we're going to cut these threads Let's see all right so what we're going to do right now is we're going to close this up like any other pocket. Um, what I'm going to do just to make life a little bit easier is I'm going to tug down on these threads and trim this pocket to meet the other one. So that way when I close it off that I'm not like accidentally not catching a side. All right, so I'm going to open up one side, get as close as I can to the teeth. And it's pretty close because I'm using a narrow foot. And then I'm going to go down and then pivot and go down the other side. All right. And then I'm going to go hopefully everybody's give me I have to give me a moment because I did not expect my dog to start barking. Let me just I'm gonna cut the threads.
And there you go. You have a nice lined zipper pocket and it's closed off so you can put your coins, candies, peppermints in there. And you have your, well, I didn't catch all of that. You have your pockets where they're not, none of it's gonna face, none, none of it's gonna poke out for the end of result. So it's very lightweight and it's nice and fun. And um, I was trying to find my cam snaps today because uh, not, you know, my I 24 line spring snaps and I couldn't find them. Um, so instead we're going to put in a magnet that you can purchase. I purchased these magnets at, uh, in the camp snap dies from, where did I buy this from? Um, camp snaps. Hello, Nova. <laughs> and I'm going to get, one male and one female and get the guy i like i like having cam snaps because they they kind of set in like a rivet so it feels really i don't know secure so i had the two together but the bad thing about my cam snack bag that you came in in its original bag. I know, I know. I'm working on um, moving things around in my room so it could be a little bit more functional. Um, it, ha it, has, it, it has a really, really strong magnet. And I just, I really like it. So you can just the, put, change the dies out. And we're going to be putting in the female. So I'm going to put that side on move this other side over here and I'm going to grab I had some interfacing but I don't see it now I'm going to just grab this piece of this is why I always keep like vinyl or cork by my desk because I always have a tendency of losing things I'm going to grab two pieces and I'm going to put one aside for the other one and I'm going to put a hole in the mark that you made on the pattern that shows you where the magnet placement is. So I'm going to punch a hole and punch another hole in this scrap piece. I'm going to take the female portion and this part, you want to make sure that nothing comes out over, over the edge because you don't want to have to even that out later. It's better to do it now. I'm going to place the cap on here. This is really cool. I just, I love this thing. You put the, I have the right die inside and then I'm just going to squeeze. And there you go. We have our magnet all ready to go. So this part is done. I'm going to set this to the side for right now. I have so many strings on this piece. I try to get all the strings now because when you're done with the final project, you don't want to have it to keep on like cutting strings and bur like little burrs. All right, so we put the magnet and now we're going to grab our our stuff for our card slot. Grab that. And we are going to grab it. I Nicole gave me um, a really cool information about how to do my emboss fit and I'm trying to see if I can have the light. If not, I'll take a picture of it, but you can see it's slightly embossed. Any better have my little Nova Knits Death Star. Um, so I'm going to grab my interfacing and I am going to we're going to stitch a line at the bottom of each card. So I'm trying to put some double-sided tape on the bottom of each one. So 
this is something you can definitely do like while you're prepping you can cut out all the slots put all um put the double-sided tape or get have your glue ready because i will be gluing a lot too And I'm just going to put my double set of tape on the side because when we do the last one, we definitely need the tape or again, you can use glue. I'm going to definitely put the information to Nicole's tutorial because she goes over that really, really well. I wanted to show how to do like other magnets or how to put different linings in. So you're going to take your fabric and you're going to put right sides together down. So you want the fabric to all flow away from the table. We're going to take it to the machine and we're going to top stitch the first row. Now you can pull your threads to the back on each one and it will look fantastic. But if you're like, if you have a person like me that will shove like four cards in one card slot, then I highly suggest you to back stitch. You're going to do it a, a little under one eighth of an inch. And I'm just back stitching like three or four stitches. And this is why I'm also wear, um, doing thread that matches the, the cork color because if the person's like, hey, I don't, you know, I want it to be extra secure or whatever, you can safely do it knowing that the colors are all merging in. So you're going to grab your accordion pocket. You're going to put the top of the edge of the accordion pocket on where you have the tape and you're going to fold it over have a crease, remove the paper without trying to shift um, the crease that you just made and <laughs> try to remove your tape without it adhering to itself and just finger press that. Then bring all the fabric to one side and sew the next pocket line. Trimming the threads. And really trim those threads because the the problem is is that if those threads poke out when we're trying to edge coat, it could just be oh I should have did this first. I took off the I'm just going to line this up. press and just make sure that your pocket that all your um your pocket ribbon is out of the way because I accidentally the first time um sewed it onto itself <laughs> it wasn't fun taking it apart but I it, it, it's fixable I'm just going to trim those threads. Fold this back. Top edge. Crease it. trying to move all the threads it's like really bright blue <laughs> okay 
away, hold that crease, move the tape, kind of get into a rhythm. Trying to dump all the little wrappers from the double sided tape over. Then done. And I'm, again, I think I'm still at a stitch length of 3.5. Okay. And then I'm going to pull this back for this last pocket. And we want to have it where it's put the tape where it's like roughly one fourth of an inch away from the top and put some double sided tape there kind of lift it a little bit okay I'm just going to finger press this and then I'm going to cut the excess off. Okay, and we have our that is super cute and then I'm going to get my glue and my little mat I I learned really quickly to buy mats um that from like the dollar store for my table because what happens is, is like I'll start painting and all of a sudden the table has the paint because I'm a messy painter um it all of a sudden the stuff has it all over so I get these little Dollar Tree ones and they work just fine. I'm going to trim this real quick away. And then I'm just going to use some glue. This is the 3-in-1 Beacon Glue. And I, apparently I have like a huge glue bubble knot thing, clog. that one doesn't work I have another one by me I always have like a million of these like every time I order from daughter.com I buy one and I'm like you really don't need this much glue and then they're they're like literally everywhere in my workroom I'm just going to put beads of glue down the center and not put glue all over my hands. Like I said, messy painter, messy gluer. I'm okay with it though. If other people are not, it's fine too. 
some people are really better at gluing than I am. <laughs> so you're going to match the edges together. Bring everything together in this beacon glue. It dries really, really fast. So what I like to do is I put the clips after I kind of like assess the glue situation. And I'm going to put it right here on the other side. All right. So we're going to put this one to the side. And we are going to then start with our second one. This time I actually think I, I, I made the cards go in the same direction. <laughs> okay, so on the pattern pieces it says, you know, make your markings um, and put it directly to the back. So when I would do it to the back, like let's say this is the pattern piece, I would flip it and the, the window would now be on this side versus the other. So hopefully with the way it goes is yeah they're the same direction so now the card slots will be the same direction now don't get me wrong having it opposite directions is not a bad thing either i did it on that one too so i'm um, lisa making the what is this my fourth or fifth one with the right direction um let me see i'm gonna get our um well our vinyl pieces and then glue it together. Give me a, I might have to go because my, my dog is acting a little wonky. Let's see. I'm gonna grab this glue. I'm going to um, beat it to get beat it up right to the edge. I'm just kind of like not leaving a lot. I'm kind of smearing the glue with the nozzle of it. Do you think fabric tack and beacon are two different glues? I've never really tried to put it together, but I do notice that, um, I'm sorry, magnet tack glue, like the glue dries faster. But I think the fabric tack glue holds better. Or is it just in my mind? Let's see. You're gonna place this on your, doing it like having one fourth of an inch all the way around like this. So you have a nice clean crisp window and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this over to the sewing and we're going to stitch all the way around the box, a, a little underneath a one eighth of an inch. Take your time. Um, it's just top stitching, just breathe and you, you completely got this. I'm going to back stitch. If you have to stop, stop with the needle down. I should have made the faux dummy because we're not going to be stitching um i still could probably do it i could probably do it because i haven't put the other fabric on there yet so <laughs> the on the very first pocket slot near the where the vinyl is we don't top there's no top stitching because there's nothing that's going in there so you can make a dummy stitch and that's what i'm going to do right now after I trim my threads. All right, so right here, this is on the this first one, there's gonna be no top stitching. So you can make a dummy stitch where it looks like it's top stitching, like everything is like cohesive, and but you're just not stitching it to anything. So on 
that's what the one the window one card slot five we make that dummy stitch okay then we're going to put um we're gonna um take our window that we made and we're going to overlap it and it's going to be centered in between card slot five and card slot six. So I'm just going to remove all these extra threads that decided to be a part of this. <laughs> and I'm going to grab some glue and just put it around. Everything gets caught up in stitches eventually just it will happen you'll see it's pretty cool and clever how this all comes together and place the fabric on here And it'll look like that. See, oh, you got little Joe right here. She's like, hey, <laughs> little one and all. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab some um, double sided tape and start placing it right underneath each card slot. So we're basically gonna be doing the same thing we did on the other side. So every time there's a little opening, just put the double-sided tape, the one there, one there. All right, I'm just going to try to rub these really good because <laughs> like for some odd reason it is not this double sided tape this particular one does not like to stick so i'm going to grab my um my ribbon and put this right sides together and we're going to stitch down okay. get your don't forget your accordion piece that's like the the main theme of this pattern this that's the one thing you do not want to lose because it has the perfect measurements for each individual card slot press this down i'm going to just lift the paper on one side a little bit much match the top edge and then you want to crease it Why am I trying to put the other one on without top stitching? I'm telling you, it's because it's Wednesday. No, if you know what it is, like the week before Thanksgiving is <laughs> pretty hectic because I'm like trying to come up with the menu, do last. I'm that last minute grocery shopper where I knew I should have got all my baking stuff last week. And I'm like, no, no, I can wait. And now the stores are like, you know, filled with holiday shoppers. And you're like, oh, yeah, the long lines. Totally forgot about those. Totally. Okay. All right. I'm going to get in the, her video. She mentions landscape fabric. I'm going to go to, um, I, I seen they have some at Walmart and they have it at Lowe's and Ace. 
and I'm definitely going to plan on getting some because I'm curious what it like you know how thin it is and how it feels in the card I just got the this is like cheap fabric that in interfacing that you put into t-shirts um you sew it in and it's really really thin and I for some odd reason I have like a whole bolt of it that I've never used so I was like what a perfect opportunity to use something that I already have <laughs> let's go congestion too yeah like i don't know what it is like hope and kendall Ken, kendall jr they were homeschooled during you know cor the quarantine thing so they were basically homeschooled for almost two and a half years they go back to school this year they they transition into school really well which that's what i was afraid of is like you know the you're you're more lax when you're doing everything virtually at home um they transition well but they are catching colds left and right and right and when we get vaccinated for something we're like yay no flu oh we got the flu okay <laughs> that this that's unfortunate <laughs> so we're going to crease this one too lift up this double-sided tape All right. Then we're going to bring this back, get our template for the last time. And we're going to position it where it's like one fourth of an inch away and just kind of crease it. So I'm going to grab my double sided tape. Put this on the side. Increase that. Okay. And then I'm going to trim. All right. So we have this side done now. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do some gluing. We're going to do some gluing and then some sewing. See, like, I feel like this wallet comes together. <laughs> this wallet comes together pretty fast as, and you can do it like an assembly line style and you can have a lot of these for like a Christmas craft show or um, gifts for friends or neighbors. I like the, the reason why I think I like the, um, adding the pocket, the lining pocket is because I'm like, I'm going to make a doctor who one for a friend and it's, it'll be navy blue cork, which is like the lining fabric inside the zipper and the wallet ID blue. So I think she will absolutely love it. I hope. I'm just gonna try to line everything up. Again, this glue dries pretty fast, so I just like to put a couple clips in areas. And if, if I feel like I didn't put enough glue, then I'll just Put a dab more. I just want, I want everything to be um, close to sealed as possible. So that way when I trim things up, it just, it lines up better. All right. 
So we have our we have our glue in place and we're now going to do some top stitching on this side of the pocket. We're going to go um, to one side and across and then just going to that corner part. We're not doing anything extra. So I'm going to move this one clip. You're going to see I'm going to start on this little corner. And if you want to, you can you can increase or reduce your stitches because when you just don't want to have like a weird wonky turn. So what I like to do is kind of decrease it in the smaller parts and then bump it up when I go across. We're doing one eighth of an inch. I'm using a 9014 needle or organ. trim these threads and why I'm trimming these threads I'll make sure that these angles are all nice and even if something like this area right here there's a little extra black I see from the the back of the cork I'm just going to snip it clean it up as best as I possibly can so that's one side just a pair of sharp scissors are really important for this part because you're going to be edge stitching and you want it to look pretty crisp and nice and clean. You'll see what I mean when I start, before I start, how I clean it up. Having um, a lighter, a pair of sharp scissors can mean all the difference in the world. <laughs> right back <laughs> I'm sorry about that puppies you know door deliveries all that great stuff so we have our two wallets done like this and what I would do what I'm doing next is I will let this glue dry a little and I'm going to put together the front tab and I'm going to grab some more uh, something else to help with it interfacing like I, I always try to stick like I said another piece of cork or um, a scrap piece of vinyl something that will not be too bulky but will help when you're um, I'm using some hem tape like it's not it's like it's like hem boning it helps like you when you pull each one of these things down when you're hemming it just it makes the biggest difference so i'm just trying to put something right here so that when the magnet's pulling back and forth it doesn't it doesn't um sorry it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't um just like pull at the fabric where it's about to rip you you that happens and that actually is how happened that happened to me one time in another pattern and it like kept pulling in it I was like I didn't understand why so now I just like put interfacing almost in, on everything and then I'm just using the nozzle again and just kind of spreading this out there are glue spatulas I sometimes use too but I did not put one for this video so we are just going to do it like we did it in kindergarten <laughs> just color in with the glue uh beacon doesn't really gum up my needles so i really like it and i'm just making sure that it's not an actually the seam allowance as when we're sewing but it's it'll be there perfectly when i need um to punch the hole and just having that extra stabilization Then I'm going to place this on top of it. Okay. 
I'm just going to kind of subtly shift it where the pieces are all lined up. And you can use a fabric roller if you have one available to you. That can help spread out the glue too. All right. So I'm going to top stitch just, stitch just at one eighth of an inch. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and end because the you won't see you won't see uh, the sti the stitch lines because it's going to be sandwiched in. To the um, it will be sandwiched in with the lining and outside body of the bag wallet. I always want to say bag. So I'm trying to make sure when I I'm needle down that it's in the right area. So I put the the where the magnet needs to be on both sides for a reason. So that way, if I'm if I flip it or whatever, I can just punch a hole. Though putting the magnet on last helps a lot with the top stitching to me. But everyone's a little bit different. Everyone feels a little bit different. So I'm going to take my glue, and there's marks that we put on the top of the zip. The zip, where the zipper pocket is, where the tab needs to go. So I'm just sticking it right there, right above it, and letting that sit for a second. And then I'm going to grab my out piece, my pieces, and we're going to start going even more. Grab some clips. Trying to get this glue to sit. We're going to be doing a lot of gluing. A lot. Because we're going to put this piece over here and this one over here. And it's going to come together as a really pretty wallet. But first we need to sandwich in these two pieces. So grab your glue again. Glue is your best friend. Glue is everything. <laughs> Stock in DST and glue, I'm telling you buddies. And I'm just going to put it everywhere. It helps to keep it makes it helps the body of the wallet feel like it's one piece of fabric first and foremost two it helps secure everything stay in place and three it's gluing it's fun all right let me grab this rogue dst And just like be look right now where you have it open, make sure there's no like strings poking out. See, like I have a little piece of right here. I'm just gonna bring them down. All right. All right, I think I have enough glue. <laughs> I'm going to take this and Place the body lining over the exterior. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to match corner to corner first. And just put a clip. And then I'm going to put a clip, a few clips just where the um, the flap where the magnetic snap's gonna be. It's really weird. You want a glue that glues fast, but at the same time, it's more pliable 
when you um when you're trying to use it Bear with me on this because I know you're like, oh, but this is a tedious part. This, this, this part's crucial. This is, this is the part you're going to want everything to be lined up because like when you see this, this, there's a part right here that's not lined up. So you're going to match it flush to flush. Like just, this is the part that you really need to pay attention to because you don't want one corner looking different than the rest, vice versa. All right, so we have that and everything looks really clean. So we're going to put, we're gonna start replacing clips. You could put, this is what I did last time. I just put a little bit of glue. It doesn't have to be a lot. You don't want it to like seep through just around the corners that are going to get stitched down so it could stay in place. You could put double-sided tape too if you wish. It's your call. Um, sometimes double-sided tape gums up my needle, so I use glue. I t And I'm going to let you know right now, on my 1541S, this past Saturday, it took me four hours to clean up everything because I had glue gummed up and the feed dogs and everything. And it took, a, it took me a pretty minute to get everything cleaned and oiled up how I like it. So you need to now just clip, make, try to make everything as flush as you can right here. It'll just make your life a lot easier. Just take your time, do these extra steps and you'll, it'll be all worth it, I promise. So I'm just making sure everything's flush because even though there might be a little hair off then we could trim it up and it'll look nice. We're going to do the same thing on this side. You just, just a bead of glue and you're kind of just spreading it out through the nozzle. Place that together nice and flush. All right, just gonna pop some extra clips and you can walk away from right now and just like let it dry, the glue dry. Um, you can be like me that that's trying to make sure everything is lined up right and start snipping it's solely up to you sometimes i like to take a break go grab a snack and um let the glue cure a little bit other times i'm like no i want to do it right now i want to see what it looks like so i'm both most days <laughs> all right so we have these clips all around so when it closes it's going to be really cute it's going to have your magnet snap and bam just like super cute i really like that i think that's super cute um if you wanted to you can reverse the other sides if you want the card slot on this other side it's solely up to you so what we do right now is where we do the last step. We're going to top stitch using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance um, all the way around. And then we make sure everything's flush. And then once it's all flush and everything's, you know, top stitched good, I'm going to install the magnet. And once we install the magnet, you know what? No, I'm not going to install the magnet because 
I'm going to wait to top like edge paint all the way around here first. And then the last step of the video, you'll see me ex um, put the magnet. So you could top stitch however you wish. I want, I'm going to top stitch with the, with the materials down. Um, you might need to have like a walking foot or something that can help level through the thickness. You can increase your stitch length if needed. Um, I like to start at the sides and I back stitch one or two stitches and I like to start on the side where I know the wallet is at starting. Does that make sense? Like where the, where the cash lot's about to do? Cause that's, I back stitch on each one of those. And when I get to the part that's a cur that's going to be that nice right angle, I'm going to position my, sewing machine, I mean not my sewing machine, my uh, bag to kind of reduce some stitches and take your time. There's no rush. And I'm going to back stitch over the beginning and end of where the um, flap is too. Sure my needles down and things get the reason why you um you have to check your you have to clean up the edges is because things are going to shift because cork has a stretch to it and it can shift while you're um sewing and if it, that's the case it's not a problem we just need to clean up those edges those threads move that double-sided tape that I keep thinking I'm throwing away but then it lines up on my my wallet okay it's gonna look nice so now we're just going to clean up with a nice pair of sharp scissors like anything that's poking out of the edge. Just like if you can see any black and it's not flush, just trim it up. A pair of sharp scissors. We could take your over to your rotary. I don't have a steady enough hand to do it on the rotary. I will wind up like messed up. <laughs> but if you're able to do it, then go for it. If you see the back of the cork when you're when you're looking at the, the exterior body of the bag, just trim it up. Just trimming it up, going around. Just making sure I don't see any of the backing of the cork, which is black, which is great. 
I know it, it may not seem like it's great, but it is because you can see where things need to be trimmed better. I got everything. I think. Except this one little corner. And I got it. See, not tons of trim up, but it's still there nonetheless. And it's like one one sixteenth here or there. And you just want to trim it up so that way when we get to this part, everything becomes easy peasy. Um let's see. Can I not have <laughs> things sticking to me? I'm going to take my clips and I'm going to put them up and I'm going to show you what we're about to do. So we trimmed everything up. Everything looks pretty good and it doesn't hurt to look one more time because we're about to do put the base paint on and when you put the base paint on it's you you want everything to be nice and smooth. And I'm going to clear off the table as much burrs or little fibers I can. Um, I do see on my top stitching, there's just this one area that has, that it didn't hit. It, for some odd reason, it missed two stitches. I'm just gonna take it back to the machine and go, for, go back like three or four stitches and back stitch. And I'm trying to repeat the same holes that I previously went to through and just to to help that area because that would you can also take a, a thread and needle and just put it through and it'll look like the stitch is complete. I should have showed you that way. That's what I normally do, but this is gonna get a lot of wear and tear, and I wanted to make sure everything was good. All right. What I do next is after I, I, I cleaned up everything, I removed all the like things that were like the black pieces of the lining that I see, um, or how, what I'm currently doing. <sighs> um, I then take a lighter and be careful cause you did use glue. This is why I always say like, let the glue dry. I'm just going around the edges of cork because cork ha gets little um, fibers that poke out and you don't want that in your when you're edge painting. I'm going to move the zipper to the mid center so and leave the protective film on it just in case it moves and gets into the edge paint. All right and Just one, passing it through the flames one last time. No rogue threads. You're not like melting it. You're just getting rid of all the excess non needed um, fibers. Okay. So as you can see, I'm doing this on a mat. I'm going to put a tighten up my glue. Um, so many, many, many people use a roller I don't there we go many people use a roller so so I'll show you that method um I sometimes use also <laughs> I have no idea what this is it's like an old I want to say, I don't know what it's for. It's some, it's just a pointy tool. I use these and like little stilettos all the time to rub it, rub it in. Um, I, it's like an old stiletto that I've had forever. As you can see, it's been through the most with edge painting and it just has worked out. I always shake up my edge paint. And it is a white, it looks like Elmer's glue, like the stuff we used in pre-K in kindergarten um, or primary school. 
and I just start rubbing it in. And right there, I can show, tell that there's one piece of fiber that did not get hit with the flame. I'm gonna trim that. You're gonna wanna have a pair of scissors by you because you do not want to have those little parts sticking up. We're trying to avoid that. We're going to rub this in to each part of the bag. And the reason why I think I like this versus the roller is for the simple reason that um, I can control how much glue I put onto the product. So I'm trying not to put a lot of glue because I think that's a lot of people's mistakes is they put a whole lot and it doesn't dry evenly and it could be very frustrating because you're like I just put all this work in and what is going on so having it dry evenly is key and then just clean it up I usually have a wet cloth by me which I'll bring when I do the second layer to because if I use my fingers then I could just use the wet cloth and help dry my fingers not dry but keep my fingers clean and not get glue. I said dry. Hello, Nova. Okay. And you're just really kind of massaging um, the, the fibers down and trying to get into any cracks that you can see the division of the two fabrics not adhering. That's why gluing it before is such a pivotal thing to do because if you can make it look as flush as you possibly can, your job um, of edging, edge painting is like almost done. Done for you because it's just one piece. I'm really actually excited to show you how I used uh, uh, Mojo Sews. I'm not playing like you. I have a friend named Christina and if she's here, she can butt in and say, yep, she said this or nope, she didn't. it. But when I got the sample in my VIP, um, so a magical kit, I completely freaked out. The formula is very, very thick and dried really nicely. So I was really excited about it. And that's why I showed everyone the Hello Kitty one, because I've never, the formula is really, really nice. The key thing about edge painting is the base coat. If you don't do the base coats right, then it can just come out not how you want it. Like you'll see a lot of cracks. And when I do the second base coat, I'll bring down my personal wallet so you can see that. Because that wallet, again, it is a sonar pattern, but I did um, iridescent edge paint on it. And I've had that wallet, I'm, it's almost two years, I think and no cracks in the edge paint, nothing. My, my Now my edge painting style has changed from the first time I did it, but needless to say, I thought it came out really, really good. And just rub it like you're trying to get it in. You can use a chopstick or an old stiletto like this. Um, the roller works good and I will use the roller when I'm applying the actual edge paint because it'll come out even. But when I'm doing this part, I'm looking for something that I can really like rub in between the cracks. <laughs> yeah, I said it. And to make it look like it's one piece of cork. Hold on, let me see. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the camera angles. I apologize. I'm trying to get different ones. It's different when my husband can do it because I can position something and he could just change the camera. When it's just me, I have to have to remind myself to um, show the camera different cam like viewings. I, I apologize. I know some people reached out about that and I'm so sorry. Um, I'm, tr I'm trying. I'll, I feel like each video is getting better. When I look at my first video, I feel like there's progression. Um, and I definitely want to continue that path where I'm giving out education where it's easier for people to see. So just, oops, that's way too much. It's basically glue. Just think of it like that. You can, I'm going to take that and I'm just going to 
using this stiletto, I'm just going to massage the glue into all the creases and cracks and crevices. And just be careful. You notice how I'm folding the wallet. I'm not like having it on the plastic just yet. A little glue at a time. I know it's a long process, but it's worth it. It's and the, the end results you're going to love. Well, at least I know I love. <laughs> You can kind of see when the glue, how the glue is coming together, if it's going to be nice and smooth. That's why I think I like the stiletto because you can wipe away excess glue while glue in another area. just going around and then once I get all the way around I'm going to leave this to dry for about 30 minutes to an hour and then I'll turn back on the cameras and then show you what it looks like and how I sand it down. I use really simple tools for sanding. Um, your, mine is an old emery board um, that came in a kit that is like was extremely coarse. I'm like oh this would destroy your nails like it would like <laughs> split your nails like bad so I kept it for sanding you can use uh, I've seen people use dremels um, like for the like you would use for your nail but they have it just for leather work and bag I've seen so many different things I see people just grab like a little bit of sandpaper and do it but those old little brown emery boards that you can get relatively cheap like you can get like 10 for 99 cents at the 99 cent store that come in a little pack those are my like to go to because i can do it do it do it and then when it looks old and rusty i could just throw it away and think nothing of it see you can see it's kind of already drying on this side and how it's let me see if i can on this side you can see it's like one it's becoming one so now we're just going to let this dry and what i like to do is I like to place it flat down and just walk away because the, I have no glue dripping. This is not going to adhere to anything. So I put my lid on. I put, I wipe my uh, excess glue off my stick and I walk away. And once this is, once the glue is done, I'll come back and I will, I have some, sorry, I have a little extra glue here that I don't want and I'm going to get it before it dries. Um, I walk away and then I'll come back um, and then I'll walk away and I'll come back in about 30 minutes to an hour and then we're going to sand down the the glue, I mean the edge paint, to make sure everything's nice and smooth and put another light layer. After that layer dries, we'll determine if not we need to put a third layer. Typically, I like to put two to three, sometimes four layers, depending on the denseness of the material I'm using, of edge paint, and then I start with the painting. Sometimes if you do your edge paint, the base coat perfectly right, you only might only need one layer of coloring and then maybe a top coat if you wish. They have matte top coats, high gloss, there's a lot of different ones. But I'll show you, when I come down, I'll bring my, my wallet that I'm currently using, and you can see that that edge coat is amazing and I'm gonna I didn't put a top coat on that one and there's no cracks nothing so I will be back and I'll see you guys all in a few bye okay so we're back and I wanted to um show you briefly this is the wallet I use you can see it's fully being used um another sonar pattern and I wasn't the best at edge coating back then and I'm not a, again not a hundred percent still the best but 
I wanted to show you, first of all, look at that shine. That's just beautiful. Um, when I do the edge coating, um, when I did the edge coating, I didn't put any uh, sealant on it. So it's still on it. There's no cracks. It's a good stator wallet too. Um, she has a video that goes exclusively with this print. So if you're picking up this, you might want to pick up this one too. Um, it's very high end, very lush. And as you can see, I use the same kind of magnets as before there and just I, I freaking love it um don't put that over the way because I will literally forget where I put my wallet so we're we're still on this first coat so it's gonna dry and I go around first to make sure that the area is dry and it is then I have see it's an old emery board and I'm just going to sand it down You just you want to you're sanding it down so that way it opens up the the glue a little bit more too to add another layer to make it even more even. You're not trying you're you're not trying to remove glue. It's going to happen no matter what because you're sanding it down. What you're trying to do is create a surface now where when you put the second layer of glue, it's going to go on top and just give it a more even out look. And then, like I said, I have a little damp cloth here. I'm just going to remove the excess glue. And if, if something's like sticking out, this is like the perfect time just to snip, snip into it. Just so that way it doesn't keep piling up on you. I'm actually really excited to see what this silver one looks like. I'm nervous and excited. So you guys are seeing it. I ate a snack. I came back. It's dry. So I get my edge coat again. I shake it. And again, this is, I was looking for another one that I used and I had to pull it from upstairs. This, this one has black, as you can see. I use stilettos. I don't know why. It, I, because I think I'm, I'm a person like when I'm painting or when I'm drawing, I'm that person. There's always that person that draws outside the line that is me i it's really hard for me to be precise so i don't want to set myself up for failure so I'll, i will start off with as little as possible and go from there and it, it should be a little bit more smooth sorry this little there's like a piece of glue that's just sticking straight up <laughs> and i'm just like let me get you before you glue you stay like that permanently so d dealing with little of the product at a time versus a lot helps helps me a lot and just you'll see me stick my hand in the pocket I I'm just gonna mold my hand around to where I'm trying to get it to be smooth and try to put it on smooth because that's how it's basically to dry. I have used this analogy before. It's similar to nail polish. You thinner layers, letting it dry in between coats gives you better results on your nail polish. When you're not working with glue. Um, fair warning, when you're working with this, I don't know. My nail polish always seems to chip when I'm, <laughs> whenever I'm edge baiting. So thin layers smooth you want it to be smooth and 
And there goes my dog again, like an engine. Our neighbor has like a really cool Harley and whenever he comes driving in and you know how like that Harley makes that mm -hmm, it starts revving up and that that nice perv sound like my dog she's like not having it she's like nope not today not today but she also will bark because a butterfly flaps his wings like that's her how she communicates with us she's happy she barks she's sad she's barks she's bark 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 versus Loki my little mime he, he, like, I have to do video of it. Like, when he, pl like, play fights with her and, like, they're, they're with a, a rope or some kind of chew toy, he doesn't make any sound at all. Like, there's no, he's, there's no sound coming out of him. However, if he doesn't have something he wants, like, if he wants to go to bed and I'm downstairs and he wants to go sleep in the room, he'll sit there and just talk. Or, like, you've all heard him talk on my videos. It's because I'm not paying him attention or giving him enough kisses or... Uh, he's that dog that brings the water bowl to you. He drinks all the water and because of his size, he drinks a boatload of water. So he has a huge dish. And then, so what happens is, is that he immediately has to use a restroom. So he'll go to the restroom. If you don't feel, uh, remember to put up his water bowl, he'll bring his water bowl to you. He's a real smart cookie. But he also got, you know, kind of mothered in with Roxy. Roxy is she's seven and she's so protective over my family super protective super smart feisty and hilarious she she's a she weighs like 50 pounds but she thinks she's like a mastiff versus loki ak snoop uh, scooby-doo or marmaduke that dude weighs has like 100 pounds maybe 120 pounds on her and is afraid of his own shadow <laughs> but he has a big bark he doesn't bark at everything though he's re he really is a gentle giant like the kids like bite him roll on him like use him as a pillow so they could play video games or right now because he produces like a lot of heat it's cold outside so like yeah they want to snuggle with him because he produces a like a boatload of heat. He's a big, he's a big boy. And he's just a good boy. Both of them. I, I'm a dog person. I haven't ever got a cat. One, I have like weird allergies. Like I'm allergic to almost like every grass. During summer, if you came and hung out with me, you'd be like, what is wrong with you? Half the time, the reason why my voice is so deep is because I'm congested and I can't breathe through my nose. <laughs> I've already, I've, I have ENTs, neurologists, all that stuff. I'm just allergic to almost everything. Um, but there's something in cats that, not hair necessarily. I got bit by a like, cat two times and I wind up one time having to use an EpiPen. Yeah, that was a, that was a story because I was like 19 had no clue. <laughs> so um and i don't know what it is i want my nose gets really congested my face itches the whole nine yards i'm slightly allergic to dogs too but i just deal with it i have really bad allergies and sinusitis i have chronic sinusitis so like you get when you're to the point where your sinuses that everything bugs you you're just like I, i'm just gonna live with it or i'm just not gonna have it it's just whatever dogs make me happy and I like cats too. I like, um, Monica has a new cat. Her name is princess and she's really, really pretty. And anytime we're like sewing and chatting, like she just pops out of nowhere. It's like hilarious. Like, I'm like give her a box. <laughs> she's really cute. I also like birds, but I'm also afraid of birds in a weird way. I don't, I'm afraid of animals. Like, so if, if I film this through the night, cause I'm trying to do segment by segment so you can see it really dry from what to dry, because I feel like a lot of edge coating painting, um, don't, don't show the progression of like how it really happens. Like they'll be like, okay, you sanded it down. You did three layers. Now let's put the top coat on. You're like, okay, wait, but what did it look like? So I want to show you what it looked like because that's what I was looking for when I was, um, looking for the videos. Um, but if Kendall comes here, if you, if you mention animals and me, he, 
like I have to pan in on his face. He'll start rolling his eyes one, first and foremost because I am, I don't get afraid if I'm watching like that say, say like Chucky. I, okay. Yeah, I do. I'm secretly afraid of dolls too. Um, and, but I don't get like as afraid because in my head I can fight this creature, even though it's like a toy that came to life in my head, I could fight it. But if I have watched animal planet, I wake up screaming in nightmares and he, it drives him nuts. Like it's to the point where he's like, I know we can never take Shinova camping because animals freak her out. Like I'm fascinated by animals. Like I'm always watching like animal planet, animal documentaries, but then I start thinking about how they can like hurt you or, you know, et cetera. And it's just, <laughs> it makes me have nightmares. That's what I have nightmares about animal planet and he'll be like can you please stop watching it before you go to bed i'm like no i want to learn more about orcas you know <laughs> it, it is what it is it's pretty funny so i'm gonna pan in so you can see as you can see i'm putting it back on the plastic thing nothing's adhering because i'm making sure that there's no glue or none of the edge paint or i'm sorry well edge dense coat around on the actual fabric you don't want it on the fabric because then you're going to be having to wipe things off and whatever. So just take your time. If you're like me and you're like, hey, I'm a messy uh, painter too, then grab something that's relatively small, like even a, a a doll needle or whatever you have available, use it. Um, I do use a roller. We'll see me do the roller when we do the third, uh, when we do the silver coating. But right now we're on our second coating. We're going to wipe off our needle. Always wipe off that glue. And you're going to just let it dry. And then when we come back, we're going to sand it one more time because I think, I think the third coat will be good. We'll sand it one more time and we're going to let that dry and then we'll get on to putting the color on. Um, I will bring out different sealants that you can use to seal in edge paint. I, there's some that have like a glimmer shimmer to it. There's some that have matte, um, extra glossy, just glossy. There's the world of edge paint is what? <laughs> is really big <laughs> so um i will show you what i have but i'm really liking this i kind of want this wallet for myself now because look joe's just right there like hey i'm joe march i'm amazing with this beautiful wallet and we're gonna pop some color with this silver from mojo sews i'm really excited about it um yeah so i'll see you in another 30 minutes to an hour Okay, so I'm back and I am looking, I'm sanding, um, just sanding, getting any extra, extraness off. And you see, I'm not like going in deep. I'm just trying to, I have my finger like as a support to bend this down. And I'm just trying to make sure everything is on a level plane and nice and smooth. And then you see, I'm taking it and kind of at a angle, kind of going like this so that it doesn't build up on the edge. Take your time. It's like filing your nails. It's sometimes it's better to go in one direction so that way you don't get splits, but if you're like me and you're impatient, have just do long strokes and take your time. It's coming out really smooth. So maybe this won't be zipper gate. You know how I always have trouble putting on zipper pulls when I'm on the camera, but I'm like a pro when I'm off. Maybe this is the opposite and like, I'm going to be awesome at edge painting on camera. <laughs> I could be overzealous here. I'm really glad that I went to so magical because I, 
I don't think I really ever heard of Mojo Sews. Like I think casually, but I never purchased anything and it prompted me to purchase this beautiful, um, the metallic colors. Cause I do use a lot of metallic and I just thought, oh, that's gonna be awesome. And she's so sweet and kind, the owner. So I'm like really excited. And we're also, the reason why we're also filing this down is so that when we do put the silver on it, it has something to grip to, like adhere to. And any edges that look, you know, kind of rough, just buff them out. If it feels smooth to your finger, you're going you're to be good to go. See, this is why I also keep a damp cloth so I can just wipe away areas and if I wanted to um because like there's some areas that are translucent and some areas that are a little bit white this could stand to dry a little bit longer I've left it for like 30 minutes a second coat and it, it could it could take them an overnight I might do that with um after putting the first coat on let it just cure overnight come back sand it film it and you can see the final product I was really trying to get it done tonight so that uh, I could have this video uploaded, but I'd rather take my time and do something right than rush and feel like it's wrong. Isn't this card beautiful? I'm bringing these all to this craft fair that I have this Saturday. It's like a holiday mart. And I hope these th these sell, but I'm actually going to be kind of sad because I kind of fell in love with each one of these pieces. It's really smooth. I can do edge paint. I just wanted to make sure it's 100. See how it, it's see how it's like it's like one piece now so when we edge coat it, there's no cracks or crevices it's going to leak out of it's just going to be nice and smooth Oh, this is beautiful. All right, so if at this point we can actually paint it and I'm gonna show you a better up close picture. Just let me dust this off. I have a little bit of glue there and I can remove that with the alcohol pad. Get this off. So we're gonna have our snap that's gonna go right here. It's gonna be nice and cute, but let's see. If you see, it's all smooth, like it's really smooth. Um, it, as you can see, the glue is white in area and translucent in another. Um, what you could do is what I think I'm going to do right now. Um, as much as I want to put the silver on, cause I just want to see what it looks like. I want this glue to be completely translucent. So that way you guys can see the next step, but I'm, I'm glad I, I was able to pause so you can see this was two. Normally I do three to four, but I, when it's this smooth, you're ready to go. Um, this is really, I feel like a really good stopping place. Stop while you're ahead. Um, and you can sand it down a little bit more if you wish. Um, you can come back and like in a few hours and just see if you could put another layer, but there's no cracks. I can't feel where the layers of cork are because in the areas over here, from here to here, we're going through four layers of cork and this looks like it's one. So we did a really good job. We sanded it, we weighed it, we were patient. Patient is definitely a virtue on here. 
Um, I really want to put this silver on it just to see what it looks like, but I'm going to let this, this base cure a little bit more. Obviously it's dry or wouldn't it be flaking up. It would be like smushing everywhere, but yes, I'm going to stop the camera for right now, put away the equipment and first thing in the morning, um, I will take some video of me putting together the silver and then possibly a top coat too because I have a couple options just wiping off all the glue dust all right well I will see you in a little bit and to you be in a moment of seconds to me it's going to be like 12 hours <laughs> bye okay so we now put our we have we did two rounds of the base and now we're, I'm going to show you how to sound it down, send it down with my dogs being a, a bum hole and literally taking fabric out to make a nest to make a bird, a bed. I'm trying to focus. <laughs> what you hear in the background is Loki. Okay. So we have our wallet and then what I, what I use is I use, um, an, like these emery boards that are really rough, too rough for our nails. And I sand them down. I sand it down. You want to be smooth as possible. You want to be able to fill um, around the edges and there's no, no lumps, nothing. I like to focus a lot because this has like a sharp like corner. Um, I'll focus, Loki, you gotta lay down, buddy. You can't get in the basket. He's in the laundry He's basket. The I don't understand. <laughs> He's trying to get into the laundry basket. Okay. <laughs> That's empty. Um, he really thinks he's little. He has like, I don't know. Little dog syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you're going to smooth this out as possible. Um, hopefully you can see this, how smooth this is. I also go at an angle and just kind of lightly put it towards the edge so that there's no like, um, dense, uh, base coat going towards the edge. So let me, I don't know how close I can get without, so you can focus, but Loki, go lay down, Papa. Now, go lay down, Papa. No. Go lay down. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you see, when I fill it, um, it's really smooth. If there's an area that doesn't look or feel smooth, sand it down. Because the thing is, is when you put this top coat on, it's not gonna magically make everything smooth. It is the base coat that you want because when you look at it now, it's all one piece. It's all one piece. So there's no, I all the base coat went into all the cracks and crevices. You're totally fine. Dude. <laughs> and you um just want to make it as smooth as possible. And take your time, really focus because we're, when we put this um, silver paint, it's not going to magically make everything look smoother. It's this, like I said, the base coat is super important. Uh, that's, I don't know who's upstairs. <laughs> no, that's okay. So I'm just sanding it with the nail file or I mean the emery board and just go to town, make it smooth as possible. And now we're going to put the edge coat. Now with the edge coat, I really do like to leave it either overnight or for a few hours and forget about it because it really needs to dry to adhere to the base. And when we're sanding this down, it's also making like little scratches that's going to grip to the edge paint. And that's really good. Everything looks super smooth to me. I can feel it and it's smooth. It looks really good. And there's like a little thing that's not in formation. You could just look at it. Everything is amazing. Have your towel and let's start doing the part that everybody wants to, wants to see, the edge paint. Like I said, people use this tool, the, this round tool. Um, you could pretty much use everything. I, I like using uh, a small stiletto but rolling your edge paint is really good because it can give you a even texture. I'm going to dip. And like I told you, I don't do a lot at a time. I try to do is 
as a little bit of paint as I can. And I'm going to stick my hands in this pocket and it's going to get a little um, squishy. Yeah, he's doing extra right now. <laughs> Okay, and just use this roller and just naturally go with the curves, I mean, or the straight points, just a little at a time. I think a lot of errors when I first started doing edge painting was that I would use like a whole bunch thinking that it was going to make it smooth and it's actually the complete and utter opposite. He's going upstairs now. He's probably going to get into the kitchen. <laughs> no, no, no food is out, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> and I'm just taking my time when you get to the corners and the edges. A little at a time. How many layers would that be from? I, it really depends on how what the first coat looks like when it's dry. If the first coat looks like it's like full coverage, like I said, it's very similar to nail polish, then I'll probably put a second coat. Um, but sometimes you need a third coat if it's a, a more translucent formula. But I got to give it to Mojo Sews because the formula she has is liquidy look his hair was on there so i had to get it it's it's it glides nicely but it's kind of thick and just take your time and get go around if you're nervous about getting it on the outside of your wallet you can put painter's tape around your around the um the perimeter and it, nothing will hit it. I usually just try to wipe it off immediately if it goes, but just take your time. So, we, so when you have a contrast in color like that, because of the, the, the fabric itself is actually dark and then you have something that's light. Yeah. It's probably always going to require at least a second coat. Yeah. And also, it, you it's you just want to have it where it's even a second coat, like it's like painting the house or painting your nails. It just gives it a better cohesive look. Okay. I'm taking notes, y'all. And I think it's going to be really amazing to see this silver against this till. Because normally when I go for till, I go straight for antique. Antique, antique, antique brass. So this is going against what I normally would do and I'm kind of loving till and silver. And you know it's a thing because my zipper came from, I bought it from Emmeline Bag. So if her zipper tape is till and then and with silver teeth then I was like okay I'm, I'm in the good. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to let this dry and then we come back and we'll put a second coat. But that, that's it. We're going to, when I come back, we're going to be putting, the second coat should be put on. I'm, I'll process, show it to you. And then I'll show you when we're going to put the magnet snap and with the finished product. But that's pretty much it. We just let it dry. And th this is the part that can get frustrating is the waiting. But it's very important. It's kind of like what I stress about interfacing. You have to let the glue cure. It's really important to give this time, this paint time to dry so you can really see how opaque it is or if it needs a second coat just it needs that time so i'm going to let this dry and i'll see you in a well it's going to be like hours but you're going to think it's seconds <laughs> so i'll see you in one second in the next scene <laughs> bye okay so we're we just put the first part of the um edge painting the silver on and we let it dry i let mine dry it overnight there you go 
a cleaner look and a new shirt. Um, and I just wanted to show it to you. Let's see. If you can see, it has a nice starter silver all the way around. Some areas are a little bit more opaque and some areas are a little bit more dense. And this is why you always go with your second coat. Um, what I like to do is I, I know I'm putting a second coat on. This might be the last coat. I just, I'm going to lightly sand it to make sure everything's even as much as possible. I know I, I just painted and I don't want to have to remove a lot of the paint, but at the same time, I want something that this next layer can grip onto. Just light, not as rough as I, I did with the dents, just nice and light. Keeping the, I like to work on the angles to make those really not as bulky. Not as bulky as normal. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the second coat on of the paint. Um, then I'm going to let it dry. Now, I don't always do this, and I may not do it with this one, but I do get questions a lot about finishing. Um, I have Angelus and Gardini. Um paint. I have used the Inglis. It's very liquidy. Um, I actually do not like using the roller on this one because the simple fact that it's super liquidy, like versus when you hear the, it's like whole, <laughs> it's like glue moving. I, I could put this one as protecting gloss and it will give you high level effects of gloss. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the second layer on, let it dry, and then I'll put the gloss on come back we'll po put the rivet magnet in and then you can see the finished look but this is pretty much it we i mean it's looking super cute so second layer here we go and again i have a protective cover um before i paint i try to just i know i sand so i'm just going to try to get all the little little dusties out and then sometimes I pour my the paint that I'm going to be using in a little glass jar and put uh, like plastic over it so that it can oxidize a little bit more and get a little bit more thicker I do that sometimes depending on the paint but this like I said the the texture of this paint is really quite beautiful um, it's thick and not runny and it, I think it dries relatively fast. I just am a person that's really cautious when it comes down to drying because this is like the last step, right? If I mess up the paint job, the whole wallet's going to look a little off. So, I mean, we are our worst critics, but so what I try to do is little, little longer strokes, little product and, um, try to clear up the the areas that look more opaque like kind of see through so we're going to put our second layer and then I'll come back I'll let this dry for like 30 minutes and I'll come back and put the final coat on or I'll put yeah, no, we'll put the magnet on and then put the final coat so you can have a look. And then I will assert a pictures when the final coat is done. But yes, it is a process. Yes, it is a very long process. Um, it doesn't have to be as long as mine. Some people could put this on with a roller and they're like ready to go. I am I know me and I'm a person that writes, draws, does everything a little bit messy. So I need um, to slow myself down to ensure that I get the best, the best, like the best I can do because I will mess it up. <laughs> I don't want to muck it up. So I'll take my time. As you can tell, I'm using like longer strokes, trying to get everything even. Cause I don't want to have like one, like a blob of, of, uh, 
edge paint on one side and it's smooth on the other. I'm trying to make it as smooth as possible throughout it. I like the fact that this has pockets. I can kind of just like rotate it. I think I'm around that top part where I started and then basically I'm going to clean up my um, work area I'm going to place this on a surface where it won't touch anything <laughs> my balancing skills are not the best right there um, put it on the place where I can just dry and most likely it's gonna be on this plastic because I like to dry things flat um, and then when we come back we'll install the magnet and the top part of the magnet and see whether or not I'm going to make a coat of the high gloss. I haven't figured out if I wanted to or not. Let's see how it dries and then we'll go from there. All right, I'll be right back in just a moment. Okay, so we're back. Um, the, the edge paint looks really good. It has a nice even coating. It's dry and I have now the edge paint from Gerardini. I am hope I'm saying that right, um, that I'm using. It has a high gloss performance. I'm going to put this on. But before I do that, I'm going to um, punch a hole, put the magnet in, because this, this finish is just like gloss, so it's okay. I'm gonna punch a hole where we had the marking, and we put the interfacing, so that way it can um, be pliable, not pliable, um, what word was I looking for? Um, structured <laughs> and the magnet it won't pull weird. So you snap it on and then I'm using my cam snap for the magnet. I kind of want to get a, uh, another press, but I'm still trying to think if I want like an Arbor press because I have this already and I hate like wasting. So we have our magnetic snap and as you can see, when we close it up, it helps if I put it in the little dot there <laughs> and it closes up super cute. It's a nice size wallet. We have our modifications of the zipper pocket and we have our modifications of Zipper pocket was our modification and our modification of putting um, the magnet on the outside just to give it like that personal touch. And I think it's really nice. It's a very clean finish. We did the sanding. We did two coats of base, sanded it each time in between, and then two coats of the silver. I also think the silver from Mojo Sews is really nice too. I'm still feeling the purple because I guess I haven't seen purple that much, but I'm, I'm kind of loving the silver on till look a lot. So I'm really excited about this. I'm going to put this uh, edge coating, this high protective gloss. It's it's like kind of reminds me of the iridescent one. I'm just going to rub it on here, protecting it gently. A thin even coating is what they said. I'm going to 
still oops, not try to take too much. I said that before I did it. And that's what happens. And Okay, it's all finished. I'm going to lay it flat like I've been doing and wipe my stiletto. I probably have to like put some major alcohol on this one. This one has been through a lot. It has like so many layers of different um, edge paint because it's like my favorite thing to use are the that, that stiletto and a really skinny one. So it's all done. Um, once this dries, I'll take pictures and I'll insert them. Uh, I'll take some pictures and I'll insert them into the final product. I'm hoping that this was a little bit more in, um, information because I know I've shown before and it's easy to show transitions with different pieces like pre-made and it's different actually watching someone putting on the product and then going with them when they're sanding it, coming back, putting another coat, sand it again. It is a process. And you can be way faster than me than this. That's the weird thing about sewing and hobbies. Some things some people are super fast at and accurate. And other people, I move like the, what is the character in Zootopia, the DMV, the sloths. I move like the sloths when it comes down to edge painting. And the reason is because I know me. I am a messy painter, writer. When I'm working with anything, when I'm cooking, I'll get flour all over the place. I, that's just how I that's how I function. And, um, some other people are really can be super precise and probably getting in one felt swoop and others can be like me that are like, okay, let's do little baby steps because it can get messy. But this is how I did all of my edge coating. I feel like each time I do edge coating, I learn something more and you progressively get better. Kind of like with sewing, when you first are behind the machine, you're trying to remember to back stitch, your stitches are a little wonky and you're not hitting those curves. And then all you know is in a few months to a year, you're like turning the curves with no ease. And like, I mean, with like, without any problems, it's just with ease and you gradually just kind of get better. I think that's the same thing with edge coating. The best thing I can give it to, if you're not a painter, it reminds me of nail polish. You need that base coat. You need to make it even so that if you have any ridges in your nails, it won't show during the, when you're painting your nails. You put your really good nail polishes, you can put one coat on, but those are far and few in between. You may need two, and then you need a top coat. Same thing. Or if you're a makeup person, I'm not, <laughs> I kind of, I'm, I'm, if you ever see me put on makeup, you would laugh. It's kind of like, I use my finger for everything, but now I feel awesome because I found out that's how Pat McGrath does it before she does runways. I'm like, well, if the queen of makeup does it that way, then obviously I'm not doing something bad. <laughs> but if you put on a primer and then you put on something to can like go the opposite, if you have really red lids or whatever, you put the color correction from the wheel on, you're trying to have a neutralized base so that way you could put on your, um, matte, like you could put on your eye, eyeshadow or whatever you're going to use. It's the same concept. The base is the most important part. You want it to be smooth and, and like have no ridges. If it's not smooth and that's when you put a, <clears throat> you sand it down as even as you can put another layer and you kind of sand it down so you have a flat plain surface that is the key and being patient to let it dry sometimes it just depends like in the summer it could dry faster it could dry a little take longer it just depends on the weather um the humidity in the air it could be anything that could take it a long time like the one last night the reason why i had to leave it overnight it was taking forever for that paint to dry and it's because it was 29 degrees outside and 
it was kind of humid because it just rained that day. So of course, it's gonna take a little bit longer. Today's a little drier, so this might dry in like 30, 40 minutes. But I will take pictures of it tonight and I will post it in um, on a post in Facebook, in, not on Facebook, but on YouTube, and then I'll do the film. I'm hoping to have this film out. I, I wanted it out this week so that people can do something over the week long, like, you know, the weekend before Thanksgiving to give gifts. So I'm just trying to make sure I can do that. But I really appreciate every one of you guys for um, sticking with me. Like I said, this wall is really fun to make. It has a lot of cool things. I'm going to link Nicole's video down below. She does her original pattern. Um, again, we modified the pocket and we modified to have the magnet be show, shown on the outside. So that way you have some kind of like if you have like um, uh, you know, uh, a special pretty magnet that like it's Hello Kitty or star wars or star trek you can do something a little bit different give a little bit of nerdiness and then we of course get align this pocket but if you don't want to line it it is one step that you could take out and it makes it faster because the way um nicole has it is she winds up like sewing where the the change pocket is you like follow this line and it looks really pretty um i just wanted to line the pockets up I always like to make one step more difficult. <laughs> um, so I will put all this information in here. I'll tell you where I got the cork. The till cork that I'm using today, I got it from Emmeline Bags. Uh, the rainbow cork that for the Hello Kitty, I got from So Sweetness. And the olive green cork, I want to say MM Cork and or my handmaid's face. They always have, she has good cork too. Um, my zippers are... The, this one right here is I believe, the zipper pull and zippers from Zipper Valley. Um, the zipper pull, I think, for this is a private group. I gotta think of their name. It starts something with an F. I'll find it and put it in the post. And the zipper tape is for my handmade space. Um, both these magnets that I just showed are from Thumbs and Thimbles, and the pull and the zipper is from uh, Zipper Valley. And of course, the the metallic beautiful colors that I've been using are for Mojo Sews. Only reason why I want to put out this video ahead of time is because if you case you want to do the pre-order, I believe her order is on Sunday and today is Thursday. So I'm trying to see if I, I should bring this out tomorrow or on Saturday. So that way you guys can, um, you know, get on to that. I, I want to get the glow in the dark. I'm just, I'm all about the glow in the dark. So um, without further ado, I will send pictures. I appreciate everyone. If you can like, comment, and subscribe, it helps the channel tremendously. Um, if you are looking for more details into modifications, I do have my Patreon. I'll link the video. And if you just want to be like, oh my gosh, you're, thank you. You're the first person ever that showed. I did not the first person ever. I just want to be like theatrical. You're the first person ever that showed edge painting this close and detailed and taking time. I want to buy you a Kofi. I'll put the information in the description box. But until the next time we speak, I hope you guys have a really good day. Happy sewing and have a good day. Bye.